and we are live. Uh, we're not live, by the way, like live, live. We're just recording live. Lakas, yeah. Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam, what are you doing? I'm doing good, alhamdulillah. How are you doing? Very well, Jazakallah khair. I've had the pleasure of uh, getting to know you over the past few weeks, we could say months, uh, online. We've not met in person, but we've had a pleasure to get to know yeah. you and uh, and uh, and understand like uh, what you're doing and products you're building and stuff like that, which is really cool. Uh, so uh, it's lovely to have you on the podcast. You're based out of uh, Holland, right? Amsterdam, uh, not Amsterdam, but Holland, right? Yeah, I'm based in the Netherlands, uh, in a city called The Hague. Do, do, does anybody ever call it Holland in in Holland in Amsterdam in sorry Netherlands? Oh my gosh, people are gonna be really be like, you know nothing. <laughs> yeah, so so I guess it's kind of uh, Holland is kind of like a province here. Uh, so people okay. here actually call it the Netherlands, but people from outside the Netherlands actually call it Holland. Uh, but I think people here prefer people call it the Netherlands. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It, it, that what I just did reminds me of like when I was like Amsterdam. Uh, it reminds me of when sometimes people from like back home come to the UK and wherever they come in the UK, they'll say they went to London. Like even if they went to like Scotland or like Manchester, they're like oh, went to London. So um, yeah. I think that was maybe a bit less now. But uh, let's talk about Muslim jobs. So uh, you're running an incredible startup. Uh, that when I saw it, I was like, whoever is behind this, the team that's behind this, uh, are doing an incredible job. Mainly from an angle of and we're seeing this rise now over the last couple of years of Muslim startups in tech who are, are you know, doing things with a, a sprinkle of youth, uh, a sense of um, understanding in UI and UX. And, you know, in the past, we used to always say things like, oh, in the Muslim world, like, you know, things are, son are, are in are sometimes not done with like, like finesse and you know, over the past kind of really two or three years, that's really shifted on its head and Muslims are, are becoming uh, what they've always been in, uh, in, 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 in many different industries over the world uh, and now in tech, which is, you know, in, in some ways pioneers. And, uh, and so it's incredible to see you do uh, the same kind of thing with Muslim jobs. So maybe it'd be good to get an understanding a bit about the Muslim jobs journey. First of all, what it is, and then um, more importantly, why you started it, why you thought there was a space for Muslim jobs? Yeah, yeah. first of all, thank you for having me on this podcast. It's, uh, it's really an honor to be here. Uh, with regards to Muslim jobs, um, it's actually an interesting story on how I came up with the idea. Uh, so initially, uh, so, so I was in this group chat, right? Uh, basically, a brother was looking for, I think he had a prayer room in his company. Uh, I think he worked at a bank or something, and that prayer room closed for some reason. I think there was... Like it was like a flooding or something, so they closed. So he was actually looking for another company which had like uh, amenities for Muslims, like a prayer room and a wudu station. And so that kind of prompted me to, uh, with an idea that you know it'd be good to have a platform where Muslims can find uh, Muslim-friendly companies. Uh, so companies that kind of offer you like a praying room, like a wudu station. So uh, typically, companies like you know Microsoft, Google, they have very they're very Muslim-friendly because they offer you all these uh, tools. So the first version of Muslim Jobs actually launched that way. Uh, I think it was like around around two weeks later, I got some feedback from some brothers. Uh, and the feedback I got was that it would it'd be interesting if it was only Muslim only. Uh, and, and then I reflected a bit more on that idea. And then I realized, OK, this was this is definitely the better way to move forward. Uh, and, and I was kind of like, OK, why didn't I just think of this in the first place? Uh, because by focusing by making it Muslim only, all of a sudden, so many different problems are being solved, right? You're not being exposed to all these, you know, all these uh, ideas, all these, you know, Western liberal order ideas, you know, like feminism, LGBT. And if you're someone who works, who has worked at a company in the West, right, then you're probably exposed to these ideas. Your, your company probably has a public agenda. You know, they're, they probably have a public stance on these things. And yeah, it, it's just, I feel like the, the companies in the West are not really aligned with our principles. And so this is, I think this is, um, this is a, a problem that Muslim job solves. And on top of that, right, uh, when you're working with other Muslims, right, we're basically uniting the Ummah together. You're using your skills to actually work with other Muslims. And you're also protected from all these ideas. You know, you're, you're working in a company that's, uh, you know, that's, that, that's probably is going to have a lot more barakah in it than if you were to work at a non-Muslim company. 
So that's kind of the problem that Muslim Job solves is that you can find a company to work at that kind of aligns with Islam. Uh, yeah. And the journey has it been, is... yeah, it's been interesting, I, I would say. Uh, we've Go been, uh, yeah, we've been, uh, I've been working on this for a year now. Uh, I've been more than a year, but uh, I think the first two, three months, it was, I was working more, more on part time side of things. Uh, but now it's, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, I'm working full time on it. Um, yeah. The, so the just like reading it back about uh, when you were talking about creating something that's specific for Muslims, uh, it's funny because so often we we've all had that moment where we've been in our own circles and um, and had a discussion about how other communities are so tight knit, especially when it comes to business and how we as Muslims should use that same uh, kind of strategy to elevate other Muslim businesses. And I, I, I honestly have had that conversation so many times in so many different circles that I imagine everybody listening here has had that conversation at one point or another. It's like a universal conversation. Yet, uh, you know, seldom do you see the conversation going any further than like us reflecting on that, you know, being an issue. And um, that's not to say, you know, that people aren't trying to create these kind of environments, uh, but it's a big task. And so it's interesting and fun to see that someone like yourself has actually stepped forward and thought, okay, let me tackle this like right in the, in the center, exactly where the pain point is. Not try and create like what we're doing at Fresh Ground, like just some content around it and try and like maybe uh, have this goal or vision of eventually being able to bring on individuals. You said, let me go to the pain point directly and, and attempt to um, attack this at scale. Because even if I, even if I fresh ground it, I've spoken in the past about how uh, you have to forgive me on two things, uh, Wakas. One that I'm just getting over uh, like a cold, so I'm like a bit Honest. like bunged up, and two it seems like I'm dealing with lag, uh, and so it's always frustrating. But we're like all hooked into this like live streaming software system, so uh, that's uh, as long as the audio is fine, then hopefully it's forgivable. Um, so from the inception of Fresh and Grounded, I've spoken about how the overall goal really is to be able to provide Muslim jobs at scale. And at scale is quite a optimistic thing for me to say, because really, you know, if we do, inshallah, get to that point, you know, we'd be able to benefit, hopefully, uh, a number of Muslims, but never at a scale that you can if you're like a, a tech startup or a platform. And uh, it'd be great if we can 10, 20, 30, 50 Muslims, we can like bring them into an organization where it's um, Islamic environment and uh, it can be remote and we can help sisters um, uh, and brothers and respect uh, all of the intricacies that are involved with living a fulfilling Muslim life. But uh, we're kidding ourselves if, we, if we're thinking that we can do it at scale. And uh, however, uh, of course, if every Muslim organization has this intention, then you can do it at scale. But, but it still doesn't take away the fact that a platform is able to do this to a level that perhaps, or at least a platform is able to um, speed up that process on a much larger scale and, and, and take the onus away or like this huge responsibility away from the companies as much and be able to like give it a platform and say, look, hey, you guys want to be able to provide uh, jobs to Muslims, high-end jobs to Muslims, and we're a platform that can actually make that possible, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's not just that, right? Also, like if you're a Muslim company, right? Uh, and you're probably going to build it with Islamic principles and it's, it probably is going to benefit you to have Muslim employees because they're, they're, they're actually going to understand, you know, the values that you're building your company in, right? Uh, for example, if you're, if you're a zakat company, right? It, it really helps if you're, uh, you know, if you're a Muslim, you understand the importance of zakat, you know, you, you know how important is it and, and the, the role it plays in our deen, right? So it's not just... Uh, providing jobs to Muslims, but it's also actually hiring people that are going to be well aligned with your vision, with your principles. Um, yeah, and it's interesting that you were uh, talking about scale. I think that's the yeah, Hamda. That's that's the great thing about technology, right? Anything you can technology is such a uh, a beautiful tool to build things with scale. And uh, sometimes I, I think we've always had talent in the uh, Muslim ummah. Uh, like you see these big tech companies, right? 
we have Muslims working. We have so many Muslims working in these big tech companies. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, I think it's a it's a good trend now. A lot of a lot of Muslims are coming together. They're building and focusing on Muslim tech. Uh, you see uh, uh, companies like Tertil that are doing amazing work. Alhamdulillah. And you also have a lot of uh, new groups that are forming, like uh, Dean Developers. I think they're based in the UK. Uh, that are also focused around building technology for Muslims. So, so that's really uh, good to see, alhamdulillah. Yeah, it is actually. That's a good point. And, and like I said at the beginning, it, this used to be a conversation that we would maybe have and be like, oh, it's a shame that we can't, we don't see more of that. And actually, it's nice to see that that generation, this generation has maybe actually, um, it's like we're all kind of collectively aligned on that feeling of, of being like, oh, we, we, we're a tiny bit behind maybe on, 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 on that angle of like, you know, like finesse in tech. And now it's like um, yeah. nice to see that all these different individuals are creating uh, tech in different spaces uh, and having that finesse with it. Uh, I want to talk about Muslim jobs more because I want to dig into like, well, is it for Muslim companies only? And like, uh, what are the plans and the roadmap? But before we do, just a bit more about yourself. So uh, I imagine you're obviously uh, technical because of the fact that you've kind of had to build this from ground up. But I just want to get a better understanding of, yeah, like, what's your background being from a professional standpoint? Where, like, where were your skills? And then um, uh, how was the building of this platform from scratch? Did you start on, like, a CMS and then, like, move yourself over? Or is it all built on scratch? Uh, just want to kind of get an idea on that kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, I think, like, just to go from the very start, uh, I think I've always been very passionate about technology. Uh, it's just, I think, something that Allah Taala has put in, in my heart. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit hard to describe it, but I think is Allah SWT has just facilitated it for me to, you know, be passionate about technology and, you know, also have the tools and, uh, you know, uh, equipment available to actually learn these things, right? Because uh, I'm from Pakistan and I think we're from a humble beginnings family. So a computer wasn't, uh, it, was a, it was a privilege to have a computer. Uh, and alhamdulillah, we had a computer. So, you know, just... With these small things, right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala basically facilitated my journey in tech. Uh, so at an early age, I started to learn how to uh, program, and uh, I think like uh, everyone is, it always starts with a lot of developers. They start with the interest with gaming, right? You want to build games. Uh, that's what you're, you know, you start off with playing games, and eventually you want to build your own games. Uh, so that's kind of how I started as well. Uh, but that journey didn't go that far because I didn't uh, go into game development, right? Uh, but that's kind of what my interest has been from the from the get-go. And so at, a early, at an early age, uh, I started to program. Uh, and then I studied in university for about a year, I think. Um, and then I basically, I didn't move forward to second year uh, because I already had the skills. And also I was working part-time on it uh, at that time. So, uh, and I realized university isn't really for me. Uh, so in that sense, I, I think I consider myself kind of self-taught. Uh, basically- well, Were you right studying after, at university? I was studying computer science. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. After after my uh, after I dropped out of university, uh, I found a very good job, alhamdulillah, at a tech company here in the Netherlands, and I worked there for approximately two years, um, and then after uh, and then I started Muslim jobs um, right towards the end of that uh, that role, and ever since then I've just been working on Muslim jobs. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so that's kind of been my journey with Muslim jobs so far. And then in terms of this, like the. Uh, uh... CMS or building it from scratch how did you was that a learning curve or did you have like templates that you that you start because when you look at Muslim jobs the first thing I thought was kind of the clean look whoever's building it knows what they're doing uh, it wasn't like janky or unsmooth or things weren't loading slow you know the, the UI was also clean and spacing was done in a manner where it kind of looks like a whole team has put that effort into it. And it seems now, like, the more we're digging into it, it was a one-man job, Allah So, so So how, how did you do that in terms of, in terms of templates or CMS? Or just yeah, so the Muslim jobs, Muslim jobs website is uh, completely built from scratch. And we don't actually even have a CMS. So uh, before, I used to manually uh, log in, create company accounts, uh, and, you know, post jobs on behalf of companies, right? Uh, but now we, alhamdulillah, we integrated basically a CMS into our platform, uh, just so it's easier to post jobs. Uh, but initially, it was just completely from scratch. Uh, I don't have a design background or anything. I just, the way I built it was I just looked at all the websites that are out there uh, in this space, and also just generally, right? You know, like all these websites that have 
uh, good design like Apple. And I just took inspiration from these uh, websites basically. And I also uh, looked at some other competitors, uh, not necessarily competitors, but like other platforms that are built in this space, like job boards and job platforms. And I just took them as inspiration. And then uh, I think this is kind of common web development. You kind of look at all these examples and then you just take pieces from like all these different websites and you put them together into uh, into like one website. So that's kind of how I uh, built the website. Uh, my background is in web development. So Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, I was able to build it. Uh, yeah, I, w I was able to build it with some basic, I would say basic design knowledge, but my design knowledge isn't obviously, I'm not a designer. So uh, I think there's still a lot of improvements that can be made, especially on the, uh, we do have like a dashboard for companies and job seekers. Uh, and I think there's a lot of improvements that could be made there, for example. Uh, okay, so in ter in terms of like uh, in terms of your I the journey of the product itself, how early is the product still? Um, have you seen much kind of like um, uptake from uh, Muslim co companies and stuff like that? I I I I ask this, but I want to actually like preface it with a uh, with a kind of like I, I want to make everyone aware that. When it came to my journey with Tartil, Kaya actually sent me um, uh, the Muslim jobs website uh, to show me that Tartil were looking for a, uh, a marketing lead, which is how I found out. And then I kind of got in touch with them then about kind of um, like the conversation. We kind of ended up, I, I, I actually, I, I didn't even like... Um, I initially kind of saw it as like a read only thing and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I like uh, started speaking to them separately about like uh, potentially having them on board and using me, my agency and things like that. And then the conversation kind of developed further and, and differently from there. But yeah, initially found out about it through Muslim Jobs. So that's kind of like where my journey started. And then like it's piqued my interest, like uh, um, for those wondering what, how I even knew about it. Uh, but other than that, how has it been? When, when, like, how has the uptake been in terms of like companies and also job seekers, and um, and how long has it been around? Yeah, I would say we're still quite early in terms of the actual product. Uh, I don't think, uh, I think, I don't think m most people know about it. Uh, I think we're still like at a very early stage. Uh, we are we are occasionally seeing companies sign up and use the the platform, uh, but I think we just need to get the word out there. Um, right now, we haven't really. Or I haven't I haven't really done any marketing side of things. I just have a I just have a very basic social media account, and obviously I'm I'm a developer, so I don't really have any experience in marketing. So I think that's something we need to focus on. But we do have, uh, alhamdulillah, we now have uh, over 200 uh, professionals in our uh, talent database, uh, which is something we're trying to uh, push for. Uh, so that uh, and we're we're actively building features that are going to facilitate basically connecting uh, Muslim professionals with Muslim companies. Yeah, in, in sometimes like in the Muslim space, when you are creating a product that's for Muslims, you can come across a um, a kind of like subset of individuals who could get angry or upset at you for monetizing that service. And I'm wondering, have you come across that and have you had to battle that in your own head? Like, obviously, Muslim Jobs is a business. It has to be financially successful for it to be able to live its mission and its kind of, uh, uh, yeah, like the, for lack of a better term, North Star that you would have with it, which I Im imagine is to be, through our conversations, as I know it, in fact, is to um, be able to help other Muslims uh, get jobs in a, in a halal environment, which is a huge mission. Even then, you're still going to get those individuals uh, who are always going to have that criticism. Is that something that you've had to battle with, whether it's like from external parties or even just internally yourself? Uh, no, Alhamdulillah, I haven't had those experiences. Um, but also, uh, I think, yeah, I think you basically need to monetize uh, a platform like this. Otherwise, you can't really sustainably grow it. Uh, we do, uh, uh, for job seekers, by the way, the platform is completely free to use. Uh, and we okay. only charge... We only charge Muslim companies because obviously job seekers, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for a job, then it doesn't really make sense for you to, you know, uh, pay for the service because you're actually the one who needs help the most. So actually our, our paid plans are just uh, directed towards companies who can usually afford these, afford the fees. And we do also have a free tier for Muslim companies as well. 
Uh, but I do and think. How does that work for for a Muslim company, by the way? Like in terms yeah, of so we basically, yeah, so we have three tiers basically. Uh, the first tier is basically a free plan. Uh, in that free plan, you can basically post a, a free job posting, and then once you post that job posting, you basically promote it. It gets put onto our onto the Muslim app, jobs website, but then we also promote it on our newsletter and all our other social channels. And then we have the essential plan, which is uh, which is also free, but you, uh, if you do hire the Muslim jobs through that plan, you have to pay like a five percent annual uh, first year salary. Uh, and in that plan, you basically get access to the database that we're building, our town network. And basically, you can look through that database and you can basically reach out to any of these uh, professionals that are looking for jobs. And Alhamdulillah, we have uh, really good talent on there. Um, and that's our second tier, basically. Uh, but, and you also get premium job postings. Uh, with premium job postings, the job posting is basically highlighted at the top of the website. Uh, so okay. you get more attention that way. Uh, and then the final plan is kind of like the recruitment plan or the recruiter plan. Uh, and that plan is basically for companies uh, who want hands off recruiting. We basically help you. Uh, we basically act as a recruiter. Uh, if you go with that plan, we basically f uh, find candidates for you. We vet them. Uh, we basically give you like a short list of candidates that meet your job position. So those are the three plans we have right now. And that's uh, th that's charged at how much percent? And and that and we charge uh, uh, we charge a twenty five percent first year salary, which is uh, kind of average of what a, a typical recruiter would charge. I, it's really funny because I was having a, uh, coincidentally a conversation with somebody else uh, in the tech space yesterday, and I was saying we were talking about how recruitment is so difficult and it's such a big risk for uh, the company. You're, you're putting a lot into like assuming that this person is going to be able to like, first of all, like be a culture fit for your company, which is like a really important thing. And then equally important, actually be able to bring the results that you're after. And this guy I was speaking to, he was like, it is one of the most difficult things that you have to do. He's in a position, by the way, of like being responsible for these, uh, for, 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 for recruiting in his company. And he says one of the most difficult things you could do, and he said that's why even some recruitment uh, companies charge 100% of first year salary. I was shocked by that. Wow. So, um, but he, was, wow. he, he wasn't saying in a way that it's bad, but he was saying in a way where it's like, that shows how valuable companies find being able to find a good uh, staff member for the, for the job posting that they have. So yeah, it's definitely a space that like he's filling. Okay, I, I want to speak to you from the angle of a, um, I want to speak to you from the angle of a, not devil's advocate, but uh, I want to speak on behalf of the people, right? So there's people who are going to be watching this episode and, you know, I'm sure many of them will have Muslim companies, but more, uh, by and large, the majority of people who might benefit from your service while listening to this might actually be those looking for jobs. And so... Um, sometimes products can be created for Muslims that maybe don't check all of the boxes. Um, and so that's why I want to kind of scrutinize. And so you have to forgive me in advance, but I want to be fair. So let's say, for example, if an individual is looking, wants to sign up to Muslim jobs, uh, what is the criteria that you look for in a company? So for example, um, I might want to be in a work environment where it's not uh, where it's segregated, for example, where like there's not there's not free mixing. So, uh, to what how granular does it get with like I don't know filtering or who you guys um, select and um, or is it kind of like anybody can sign up and then they just check the boxes like from a company perspective they check the boxes that like are like fit their company so. Prayer room check. We have a prayer room. Uh, Fridays off check. You can like have Fridays off or whatever. Or is it like is it more granular like that? Just want to kind of get an idea. I'm sure there's many individuals who are like, okay, Muslim job sounds like a perfect thing. I want to get a job. Um, I want to be paid well. I want to work in a Muslim company. But then they might have those kind of reservations. Yeah. So we do have some checks in place. Uh, for example, when a company signs up, we try our best to. Uh, do a surface level check on the company. Uh, we try to ensure that, you know, it's not a company that's doing something that's Islamically questionable, you know, so that ultimately uh, the companies that you see as a job seeker, right, uh, are companies that you can kind of trust. Uh, but obviously we can't really vet a company in detail because we only have uh, information that's available publicly, right? So we do a surface level check for each company that signs up. 
Uh, and as long as they're not doing anything Islamically questionable, you can, uh, any company can sign up. And then after that, uh, right now, we don't have these features in place, but we are working to make it so that when, when a company signs up and they're filling out their profile details, they can enter all this information. Like, for example, if, if the job posting is an on-site position, is it going to be segregated or not? Is there going to be prayer rooms? And typically, if you are a Muslim company, then you're going to have these. Uh, but we're still adding these just in case, uh, just to uh, keep the job seekers at ease, you know. And I think we will also potentially add filters uh, in our job search menu where you can filter out companies that don't have these uh, options selected. Yeah, so so basically you can find companies that you're that you'll be comfortable with, I would say. And then have you noticed already kind of in the growth of Muslim jobs already, have you noticed any trends or patterns uh, kind of in the Muslim world when it comes to job seekers or in companies? I know that's a very vague question, but I don't know the world <laughs> of recruitment. Uh, so I, but I do know the world of like, uh, trying to understand trends and data from, I suppose, like a marketing standpoint. So I'm intrigued to know if you've been able to do any, get any takeaways, maybe some that have surprised you or others that have affirmed, uh, any hypotheses that you may have had. Uh, I would say it's a little bit early for, uh, takeaways and trends, but I have uh, noticed that a lot of people actually do want to work at Muslim companies. I, I get a lot of messages, uh, you know, that people are like, they really want to work at Muslim companies. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, you know, that's really good to see that, you know, there's so many Muslims that actually, that are also seeing these problems. It's, it's usually Muslims that work in the West, right? Uh, that, that have worked with companies that, you know, you have sometimes have awkward experiences as a Muslim. And so we are seeing a lot more people that want to work at Muslim companies. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, that's, I think that's one trend that I am seeing. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, I would say it's still a bit early for takeaways uh, from our from our side. I, I I was thinking that when eventually we're opening up, so far when we've like recruited for roles in Freshly Grounded, we've looked in our personal network and until now that's been both fine and also my preferred method because you think, oh, like this guy's got this talent or like I know this guy's situation and so you want to bring them in and that's like worked up until now and it works until you don't know somebody who could do a specific skill that you need to be done so like we're working towards the point of like needing things like for example motion graphics uh guy and, and stuff like that and so that these kind of skills i don't have or know anyone that, ha that has it and then so when muslim jobs came about on my radar i was like this is like the perfect place for that so no doubt uh, in the future inshallah you'll be seeing freshly grounded on there and like any jobs and stuff we'll have, we'll be like listing them, listing them through uh, Muslim jobs. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we would love to have freshly grounded on, on our website. From a marketing perspective then, so you're saying that you haven't necessarily like been able to like delve much into the marketing and stuff. Is that something that you think that would be quite challenging from a job site perspective? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I from my side, obviously, I am a developer, um, so it's 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 a bit hard to uh, say that. But I, I I think there is a lot of potential here. Uh, if I just because I've done research on other job platforms, uh, and they're um, you know everyone knows these platforms, right? Like Indeed and Glassdoor, yeah. these are quite well known platforms. Uh, so I think there's definitely room here. Uh, Does Glassdoor do recruitment? Uh, I don't think they do recruitment. I think they or like are they a job site? Yeah, they're they're a job site. Yeah. Oh no way! I because th I thought Glassdoor was like just you get an insight into salary expectations. Yeah, so that's something. Uh, yeah, so they do have that alongside like jobs. You can also find jobs there. On, on that's Glassdoor. a great top of funnel like marketing technique, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we also like whenever we do have a job posting on our website, we advertise it on. Uh, you know, pretty much all our social media. And that also, I think, helps a lot with getting traffic on our website. Um, and we, um, yeah, th that's pretty much been our, our main strategy for uh, getting traffic onto our website. Just advertise it on uh, on our newsletter, on our, we also have a Telegram uh, channel uh, on our social media. And then we typically get a lot of uh, traffic that way. And also so, people, so people also, uh, just to finish my thought, also a lot of people tend to share job postings uh and yes. so it, that also helps a lot with uh, with the marketing efforts yep
So from a wider perspective, when you look at Muslims and uh, Muslim search for jobs, why do you think that there's been like a trend towards uh, Muslims uh, working for Muslim companies? Because prior to maybe the most this like recent decade, um, you know, I remember my granddad growing up. Uh, he initially worked at, or when my mum was growing up, my granddad worked at Quaker Oats. You know, great job. He loved it and would come home with cereal and stuff. And um, and then and even like if you look like his peers, you know, these guys would work in like non-Muslim companies and enjoy their time, um, come home and, and never feel like that there's a itch that isn't being scratched from the um, job uh, and uh, ethics uh, uh, kind of like marriage there. Like they never seem to have found a divide there. And now it seems like that divide is just getting like clearer and clearer and wider and wider. Yeah, I think I think it has a lot to do with like kind of the state of the world we're living in right now, uh, especially in the West, right? Uh, there's been a very, there's been a push of, uh, the West has been pushing an agenda, basically like liberal world order agenda. And now that's gone really far. That's why you have people protesting. Uh, I think there was a big protest uh, yesterday where people are actually protesting uh, for schools to not edu not edu educate children with LGBT and all these, you know, like liberal ideologies. And I think this is I think that has gone really far to a point where even a company has to, you know, make a stance on it. And if you're a Muslim, right, that just if, you're if the company you're working at has these kind of views and stances, then you just feel uncomfortable working there, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it becomes difficult, and it's you in your heart you don't feel comfortable working at, at that company, right? You don't feel comfortable, you know, maybe benefiting that company because at the end of the day, as an employee, you are uh, benefiting and promoting that company. Uh, so it does feel a bit uneasy, uh, you know, when you are working for such a company. Um, yeah. I think also, like, have you seen those videos of, uh, like, uh, on social media, that people have, like, recolored videos and images from the past? And there's, like, this one video I came across, which was, like, london in like the 1960s or whatever i don't know exactly when it was and the men and women are walking on along the street and men are wearing suits hats ties like you don't see anyone in like street clothing or anything like what we wear nowadays and then like women all had their um were, were wearing modest clothing had their uh hair covered and this was just the norm so i think like to an extent also there's this idea of um when my granddad for example was going to work um, there was a lot more of a um, shared value kind of or shared ethics, shared morals. And so you didn't necessarily like, come across these like issues. Like every man that was working there was kind of going home to his wife and his kids. And um, and so even with regards to that like, conversation stuff, none of that, none, nothing, none of that kind of like felt odd maybe to them. Uh, because I'm just going to pause because my lag has become a bit like too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down my computer and then like restart it. Okay, we're back. We're back on. I think the lag is a bit better. Uh, so kind of building on what you've built at Muslim Jobs, I feel like there's still uh, leaps and bounds that we have to go in the Muslim space and Muslim world uh, with building out products, however, for Muslims that are on that level. So like now you're seeing Muslim Jobs, great. A job site for Muslims, by Muslims. Muslims can go there, um, sign up for jobs, and companies can go there and, 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 and look for talent. But I feel like that space, I, I might just not be aware of it, but I feel like that space still needs, uh, there's a lot of spaces that still need filling in that sense with regards to, for example, now education. So um, when you look at the education route, it's like there's public schools and then there's, private schools i feel like in the uk when i was looking at that dilemma it was like well public schools i'm getting more and more concerned about um but then when it comes to private schools like private muslim schools i'm struggling to find private muslim schools that are um i suppose like affordable but on par with the education that i would expect or want my children to go through uh and often I feel like you find if, if you're paying for a private school, maybe education 
uh, is something that you feel like you have to sacrifice on. Again, this is more kind of like based on stigma more than it is based on data. I've seen some pretty incredible Islamic schools as well. Uh, but no doubt it feels like there needs to be some leaps and bounds there because then the third option for individuals is homeschooling. And there's a huge trend towards homeschooling. Uh, and we've actually got a homeschooling expert that's coming on Fresh Ghana soon. There's a huge trend that's going towards homeschooling, but uh, for some people that's just not feasible. So like m my wife and I sat down and we discussed the concept of homeschooling when we first like, were thinking about different forms of education. And for us, homeschooling wasn't really... Um, something that was an ideal scenario for us like i don't think it is for it is for some families i just feel like it maybe isn't for some and uh i'm like from a time aspect i've got tertiel i've got fresh ground i've got these other projects that i'm invested in so for time aspect, i'm like working a lot right <laughs> and then to to have the expectation that from morning till evening uh all day long without any break, uh, my wife's gonna be like uh, having to like, take care of that homeschooling system. Um, it feels like a big ask as well, uh, and like, and so that, and then also then when it comes to kind of other other parts of that homeschooling that my wife and myself maybe feel like there's uh, there's better expertise for you have to bring in those external sources right uh, in in perhaps certain subjects uh, uh, or like you're then like paying extra money to either bring those individuals in or to send them to private institutions to do that particular subject matter. It doesn't feel like the ideal scenario. It's a bit like you're plugging things in. Again, I feel like homeschooling out of those three options is the best option right now. And they've got a lot of families. I've heard like a lot of success stories with homeschooling. I feel like a lot of people have made it work and I'm probably still an advocate for it, but that doesn't mean that it works for every family, right? And so I feel like there's spaces still that need to be filled. Do you, do, do you agree or uh, like what have your experiences been in that sense? Yeah, I mean, 100% I would agree. Uh, I think um, I think we need to really reflect on, um, you know, the, the problems we have as a community, right? I think we need more Muslims to uh, kind of, because uh, I think we need more Muslims to kind of look into these problems and try to solve them. Uh, I see a lot of developers, you know, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, they're working, they're building tech for Muslims, uh, but unfortunately they're working on ideas that are not necessarily problems that exist in our, in, in our society, right? You see a lot of the same, like, same Quran apps, you see the same, like, prayer time apps. I think we need more people who actually need to look into these problems, try to come up with a solution. And it, it's not like just social problems, problems right? and stuff. Yeah, even social problems, it could be anything, right? You just need to, you just need to look at a problem and try to solve that problem instead of, uh, yeah, instead of trying to build something that's already been built, right? Uh, and alhamdulillah, we have a lot of talent, I think. Uh, but even then, I think we should still uh, try to prioritize problems that exist in our communities. And what I what I personally like to do is I, I, I keep like a notebook with me. And whenever I come across a problem uh, that I'm experiencing myself or I just uh, thought of, I just write that down. And then I might come back to it later to, uh, you know, reflect on it a bit more, see if there's a, if there's a technology solution I can build for it. Uh, and that's kind of how I uh, try to use what I've been blessed with, you know, the skills uh, in the the, the skill set uh, to kind of use that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to, because uh, ultimately at the end of the day, we're, we're going to be questioned about, uh, you know, what, how, what we use our skills for, what we, how we use what we were blessed with, right? And I think we all need some way of answering that question, right? Uh, so for me, this is how I kind of, uh, the, I'm hoping this is kind of, and I hope Allah Subhanahu accepts it from me uh, that I'm going to answer this question. And I also encourage people watching this to also reflect more on like what they've been blessed with, you know, the skills they have, and to see if they if their skills can be used in any way to solve the problems that you know exist in our community. And I think if, when we have more people, you know, with that mindset, I think we can solve any problem that exists. Yeah, it's true. You know what that's reminded me of is that sometimes we can, maybe we can be guilty of like focusing on. Uh, our own situations and not looking from a wider aspect of what you just said which is what can I do for the sake of Allah to build my akhirah but that's also wider than just like my individual situation and um, there's something really powerful that Ustad Musa said uh, the other day when we were doing a Tartil recording and it's kind of related to this some way. I'm, I'm kind of like um, 
stretching here by trying to relate it, but it's a benefit that's come to my mind, and I and I and I think that it's incredible. And for people to wait like six weeks to hear it in like that thirteen episode is 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 sad. So I'm gonna like mention it now. Um, he basically said that when it comes to like uh. So uh, the questioner basically asked about um, a particular issue with regards to um, with regards to the, like uh, an Islamic benefit. So uh, more specifically, uh, the question was: um, If I uh, I I know that um, memorizing the entire Quran is not fard upon me, and therefore I'm not that um, uh, necessarily I don't see it as a huge priority uh, because it's not fard upon me. Is that like a bad way of thinking? That was like essentially the question, right? Which I think was a, is a good question, and we can also relate it in this in this what we're talking about actually about like you know like maybe um, using my skill to benefit on a wider angle is not necessarily far upon me. So like, is that really something I need to focus on? And his answer was just incredible. He said, "When is." When it comes to things in the dunya, we are so eager to take these, to, to, to get all of the knowledge on these things ourselves and to take it on our own shoulders. We know the best universities that uh, a person needs to go to. We know the best chat GPT prompts. We know the best hacks. We know the best technology. We know the best stack. We know, um, uh, we, we, we know the best trends to follow for social media. We know the best monetization routes. We've studied all the different like psychological hacks, consumer, uh, consumer psychology and so on and so forth, like, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We didn't, um, say, okay, no, that, that there is for the experts to know. I don't need to know about that. Um, I'll just focus on like what I want to focus on. No, we're like, no, what is the best uh, university to go to? What is the best career path to use? What is the most like lucrative uh, skill that I can learn right now? I want to take this onto my own shoulders. But then when it comes to the akhirah and we're like, oh, like, should I become a hafid? We often will say, oh, no, that's for like the scholars or like uh, understanding fiqh to like a Largely, that's for the scholars. But when we when it comes to the dunya, we don't say that's for the scholars. We say no. I want to know this. I, I want to put it on my shoulders. I'll take the responsibility for that. I want to learn the best. Like what is the best skill for X, Y, and Z? That was one benefit that he gave. The second benefit that he gave that really hit me on the same topic was he said, you know how in the Quran it says, um, it says, uh, do not forget your portion of the dunya. In fact, I'm going to use the luxury of like the fact that this is a virtual episode and I have a computer in front of me to actually get the IR properly. Um, don't uh, forget your portion of the dunya. So the ayah is in Surah Al-Qasas, ayah 77. Um, and it says, this is the Sahih International Translation. It says, but seek... Uh, through that which Allah has given you, the home of the hereafter, and yet do not forget your share of the world. Right? Do not, and, and in other translations, it says, do not forget your portion of the dunya. And it carries on and says, and do good as Allah has done good to you, and desire not corruption in the land. Indeed, Allah does not like corruptors. Okay. So, when, he quoted, when as Sheikh Musa quoted this, he said, the ayah says, and do not forget your portion of the dunya. Yeah? And we will often talk about this ayah and we'll say don't forget your portion of the dunya don't forget your portion of the dunya but he said it doesn't say don't forget your portion of the akhirah why because we ha- it says we have to seek we, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we have to seek the hereafter the, the, the akhirah is what we, we, we should seek but don't forget your portion of the dunya and he said well, what we often do is we will seek the dunya and then we'll do a bit of Quran or something we'll say oh, let me not forget my portion of the akhirah and when he said it like that, it just hit me, man. I was like, subhanAllah, like, all of us can be, like, fall into that. We can, like, d- like do just our portion for the day of the Qur'an and be like, oh, I don't want to forget my portion of the Akhirah. It's like, but my day is, like, 99.9 reoccurring percent about work. And it's like, my portion of the Akhirah. It's like, you should be completely flipped on its script and be like, um... Let me live my life for Allah. Let me look at everything that I do as an act of worship. And then, yeah, put some, not forget my portion of the dunya, right? It just hit me when he said that reminder. And so I have an opportunity here to like re-remind. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's very profound. 
Yeah, especially when he kind of like says it from that angle because like there was a few he became very passionate about that 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 question that he was that that he answered. Sometimes like you need to hear something that you already know but from a different lens or a different perspective or just said in a different way. Like none of us don't know that that's true. None of us are like, "Oh no, like definitely focus on the dunya like we all know this but it's like something you just yeah. hear from another hand like whoa that i didn't think about it from that perspective and i suppose like circling back to muslim jobs um obviously everything's always by intention actions are judged by the intentions and uh, a person could come on on the day of judgment and think that they've done some good but because their, their intention has been corrupt or wasn't sincere they don't get the reward for that and so while that's true um when it comes to something like muslim jobs uh, how incredible can it be uh, seeking a job in the Muslim world and having the intention that I want to get my rizq but um, purely for Allah's sake uh, and in as much, as clean as a way as I can possibly get it. Like, let me try and work for a Muslim organization uh, that kind of values Muslim employees and so on and so forth. Where I can like work and worship Allah through and through in my career. So even when I'm seeking my rizq, even within that, I'm like constantly worshiping Allah when it's like, I'm able to go to Jummah, I'm able to fast, I'm able to like be in an environment that's permissible, I'm able to work on a product that's permissible and, and like and so on and so on and so on and so on. So yeah, it's pretty incredible in that sense. Did you think that like deeply about it when you were building Muslim jobs or was it like, just like, no, there's a gap in the market here and I want to be able to fill it? Or was it like, did you go all the way deep into, into like what this could mean for years to come for generations of Muslims? <laughs> Uh, so I actually thought a little bit deep uh, for my own personal life, like for my own personal vision. Like I was thinking really deeply. Uh, I think I have described this to some people that I, I had kind of like a midlife crisis, even though uh, I'm only 23, right? So I, it's not really midlife. You're 23? Yes, I'm 23. Yes. Subhanallah. I hadn't... Do I look older? <laughs> it's not that you look older, but you're very mature for your age, Allah Thank you. Yeah, so I had, a, I, had a, I had a midlife crisis, like, uh, I would say, like, towards the end, like, I was working full time, right? And the yeah. kind of the midlife crisis was that, um, I, I kind of briefly mentioned this already uh, in this podcast, uh, that, you know, like, I, I, I had the realization that, you know, I've been blessed with, with so many things, like, even the circumstances that I've been blessed with, right? Like, right now, um, Alhamdulillah, I don't have to uh, pay any bills, I don't have any dependence on me. And this is, like, the ideal time for me to you know, to work on these things. Um, and so I just made a realization about all these things that I've been blessed with, right? Uh, and then I realized, okay, I need to do something for the sake of Allah. I cannot just, Allah has given me, given me all this, right? I cannot, I'll need, an, I'll need an answer on the day of judgment, right? Like what, what I did with what he blessed me with, right? Subhanallah. Uh, so, so that's kind of when I made the decision, okay, I want to use my skills for the sake of Allah SWT, right? Um, I want to be Akra first. I don't, uh, even if it means sacrificing uh, you know, even if it means sacrificing some money here and there, right? Because uh, I've also had a lot of ideas uh, that are maybe not in the Muslim space, but yeah. that would have been kind of uh, more lucrative in terms of the financial side. Sure. Uh, but I knew that it's probably going to corrupt my attention. Uh, so I, I just stayed away from that. Um, so that's kind of the vision I have for myself is that I want to kind of be a someone who's, who's just trying to look at the problems that exist in our community and solve those. So And Muslim jobs was just an extension to that. I saw I saw a problem that existed and I just wanted to build something for it. I, I never when I initially started it, I didn't realize how how impactful this was going to be because because as I said, initially it wasn't even Muslim companies. I think it, it's it's along the journey that I've realized that even just having this idea and building this, it, it was actually a blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, He wants us to unite. He wants us to you know uh, to earn halal income. You know, and and, I, and uh, he used me as, as a way to, you know, to, to help in that in some, in some way, form. Uh, so that's kind of how, uh, yeah, how it went, I would say. Well, you say like I um, I had this, um, uh, all of these things that Allah has blessed me with. How can I not use it uh, for Allah's sake? Because it will be a question on the day of judgment. But another blessing that you had is even the 
ability to think about that or to think in that way Allah blessed you with the um, gift of being able to think about that because we, you could have had of the, all those blessings and even been grateful for those blessings but still not thought as far as like how can I use it uh, to create something and I always think to myself like these things that, that's always like such an incredible thing like when you hear about people having those thoughts and it being a sign that Allah hasn't abandoned their heart and um uh, and, and, and that's like the scariest thing, right? Like it, it being in a situation where Allah protect us from it, ever, of ever being in a situation where your consciousness of Allah, your thought of Allah um, decreases and you don't think about that uh, about Allah in like every single thing that you do and, and your gratitude towards him. So that's, uh, that's very, very inspiring. So j just to kind of like uh, wrap up the episode, um, what what's the, what are the kind of like uh, plans with Muslim jobs kind of going forward? And also like, is it um, is it up and running and like workable now? I know you said that there were kind of like in the past like iterations, and then like you've been like oh, it's, it's, a, it's a startup essentially, and so like it's constantly like something that's being built. So where is it at right now? Is it usable? Can companies sign up? Can uh, Muslims uh, themselves sign up who are looking for jobs? Uh, and um and, and get started with on the, on that kind of journey yeah so uh, at the moment it's completely usable by job seekers and muslim uh, companies uh okay. so you can go on muslim jobs right now and sign up for an account is it muslim jobs uh, are, not dot com muslim jobs yeah yeah muslim jobs .io. domain was uh taken when i uh, started so i had to rely on the dot io the domain yeah it's good though. It's uh, like that tech kind of feel to it right yeah yeah yeah, so we do have a lot of plans uh, right now. It's just a very, if you're a company, right, you can access the, the database and you can post jobs on there. And if you're a job seeker, right, you can uh, basically, you can create a profile and we're calling it the talent network, right? You join a talent network and companies can see your profile in that database. Uh, but we're uh, we're working on a lot more features uh, that are going to be coming out in the, the next few months, inshallah. And I think the one of the big ones that we're working on is that uh, companies will be able to directly invite uh, anyone they find interesting. Uh, so you, okay. so you, so if a company finds your profile interesting, uh, they can invite you to an interview, uh, or they can invite you to apply as well, and then you will basically get a notification that this company is interested in you, and then you can directly apply to the to the to the, to the company. And how can people get in touch with you personally through your LinkedIn? Uh, yeah, you can contact me through LinkedIn. That's probably where I'm uh, most active. Amazing. Well, Waqas, uh, Jazakallah khair for your time. I think it's like very inspiring what you're building and even more inspiring now that I know that you're only 23 years old. Uh, may Allah put barakah in it and uh, I urge anyone to check out Muslim Jobs. <coughs> I'm going to have to do that a bit again because like I like couldn't get, I was trying to finish my sentence. Like while I was giving, uh, I encourage anyone, I encourage anyone, I encourage anyone, I encourage anyone uh, to sign up to uh, MuslimJobs.io. Uh, incredible platform may Allah put barak in it and uh, please do come back and give us an update on how things are going and, and so on and so forth man I mean Jazakallah Karen for having me on there and yeah I would love to come back inshallah Jazakallah Khair okay take care Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh